over the doorsteps because the sport becomes a mockery. The, the truth is, either way, his reputation is tarnished forever. Because it doesn't matter. You fight a drugs test, you fight a drugs test. I mean, it doesn't really matter how long he's banned for. His reputation is finished in the, in the sport. Because this is a sport where people are in there to render the other one unconscious. And to do it under the influence of steroids, aka to cheat, should be a criminal offence. You know, it may be a life ban is what's needed to eradicate a cheat in the sport. There you go. Because what's the point in signing up for VADA drug testing if when you fail, everyone just says, oh, actually, don't worry about it. Yeah. You know, and, and the excuse that UCAD said it was okay is irrelevant. Another problem with sometimes with bodies like USADA is, is that it's who they report the findings to. So you could have a testing agency that you're using who only give you the results, right? So say that I employ USADA or UCAD, right? And then it's me contracting with them. So when a fighter fails a test, who gets told? Me. So what I'm saying is, how do we know in America that there aren't people that have failed drugs tests that have never, it's never got out? Do it. Do it. End me. End me. End me. End me. WBC mandatory challenger Dillian White has allegedly failed a PED test. Dillian White, as reported by BoxingSing.com, has tested positive for a banned substance that um, a July 17th test came back with a positive result. Mm. Did they tell him that? But you knew he tested positive at least no, no, 36 no, 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 hours. No, 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 no. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and uh, I'm going to ring my pal Terry who I know that uh, is a boxing expert boxing expert, we're going to ring him now and uh, here we go Terry and we're going to have a chat about what's been going on. We're going to have a rate chat. So, alright, so all you hardcore boxing fans are now in for a treat. So, Great. how's it going, Terry lad? You're all right, mate. I'm all right. <laughs> you all right then? So, uh, what have you been up to? I bet you've been in demand, haven't you? Last uh, five, six days. <laughs> Mate, this billion thing. I know. You've been coming in years. I've been on top of the steroid thing. Oof. And no one would listen to me. They all laughed at me. Yeah. I didn't have Terry. Um, now, <laughs> you know, can they leave me? <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, Right. Well, first of all, then, we'll, shall we cover the Eddie Earn show at the weekend and then we'll go straight in on the serious stuff, yeah? yeah. Right, let me just uh, get it up. So, other than that, you're all right. Have you listened to the New Age pod, Terry? Yeah, I did. Sweet, so we're good one, wasn't it? I'm listening now, man, so I've always made the most of it. Martin went, Martin went in balls deep, didn't he? Yeah, well. Right. You what, mate? We've been working for about three years. Yeah. It's, uh. How long, how long has it been going, that, Terry? Uh, it's been going a few years, that pod, hasn't it? Yeah, mate, it's about three and a half. It's about three and a half. Right then. All right then. Well, listen. We've got uh, Eddie Earn's show in Arlington, Texas. So two, four, six, eight, nine fights. I think everybody won for him except Morris Hooker, didn't they? Quite a surprise. Yeah. Well, did you did you have Rem Ramirez to beat Hooker? Yeah. I, 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 the one I thought was 
Flanagan was slightly overrated as a boxer, like Paula is as well. So when they met someone who could halfway box, they were always going to get exposed, which which is what happened with Hooker box. But Hooker's a world beater. He hasn't. He's, he's tall and he's lanky, but he's not powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, but he had the power to keep people a bit honest and nervous. Hawker doesn't have that. Yeah, well, he, uh, it was a good fight, though, wasn't it? Oh, it was a hell of a fight. Like, that finished by Ramirez, absolutely insane. Well, we'll not speak about the first two, four, six because the, the the first six fights on the night were atrocious. So we'll just cover the. Oh, oh, oh no 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 no! We, we need to talk about. There's a kid on there called Austin Williams that boxed. Okay, I tell you what then. We'll start at the beginning. Fra- Francisco Javier Martinez five and zero. Oh. Uh, a lightweight. Yeah, skip him. I don't know. Skip him then. Darius Bagley debut. Carlos Dixon. You want to skip that one? Skip that. Mavladin, Bayer, Slavnov, Friano, Solon, Staley. Skip. Weird names, skip them. Austin Williams against Jabra Dan Harris. Yeah, well, so, the, so Austin Williams, so this kid was a super talented kid. Had an outside chance in the 2016 Olympics. Didn't quite work out. So he was working through the whole US squad and then I think they just had issues with the style. So he ends up backing that off, turning pro with Eddie. The kid is Super talented. Like, if you want to, I know we talk about her signing a lot of people and then selling us bullshit about how good they are. Yeah. This kid, Austin Williams, can be the real deal. Like, just. Is that good, yeah? Be, yeah, be excited. I'm sure I told Ben to sign him as well. Of all the random things I told Ben to do. Yeah, Austin Williams, oh. I have to remember that name. I have to remember that name. What did you think to Tremaine Williams, 18 and 0, beating Yennefel Vicente, 35 and 3 and 2? So Tremaine Williams is another one of these. Like America seems to produce these kids yeah. that are old heads on young shoulders. So they, they box really intelligently, yeah. super skillful. But what, what's different from these lads and the, and the lads that we seem to kick out of this country is they know how to they know how to create openings, number one and number two. They know how to finish a fight. Even if got you hurt, they're not just swinging wild punches, they're they're, they're taking you out of shots from small depths, floating rib to the chin, to the temple. It's accurate. And that's what happens when you spend your your living years around veterans, tough old men in gyms who who show you these little tricks, which we don't do in this country. Yeah, you know, oh, well, you mean like the, the shoulder rolls and stuff like that? Well, no, no, so, so the shoulder roll gives a big mid boxing there. Midwest? No, 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 no. So, so the shoulder roll, like, you see people trying to do the shoulder roll, now. Yeah. Like, you see people trying to do the shoulder roll now. I just don't believe it's a style you can do if you haven't done it from day one. Yard does it, doesn't it? Yard does, but if you look at him, he doesn't do it what I'd call in a textbook way. So he doesn't do it when he shuts down your options. He tries and he does it. He does it better than anyone in this country could. Yeah. He's not from that kind of school. So as soon as he fights someone who is experienced and had enough fights, he'll find that he's eating a lot of left hooks because against that shoulder roll style, you don't even bother with your right hand. So all you're doing is you're fainting with the right hand and then you're just doubling up on the left hook or maybe go from a hook Fake the right hand, go with a straight jab. Just confused about breaking the rhythm. Yeah, because Froch would try, did it for years. He had that shoulder. He used to tuck his shoulder in, didn't he? And, uh, but he used to get caught by left hooks, didn't he, Carl? Yeah, exactly. It's a style where you can't really defend the left hook that well. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember. He always used to tuck it in, even even if you're just messing about with it in a pub. He'll say, "How are you doing?" And he'll stick it up, but he'll always roll his shoulder in, and it's just natural habit to a minute because they've done it that much, haven't they? It's ingrained in the minute. Yeah. Well, and you've got to know the difference between the shoulder roll and the finny shell. Yeah. So, yeah. Shoulder roll, pretty much defensive style, the counter punching style, and the finny shell isn't necessarily a counter punching style because with the finny shell. You roll the shoulder in, but your left hand is still up, so you can still work the left hand. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's interesting, man, some of these technical things that people sometimes don't pay attention to. 
What's this? Uh, you know that Arthur Abraham? What's that thing he does with, where he just ploughs forward like Gallagher fighters? Is that called the turtle shell or somewhere? No, that's just that's just hands up. <laughs> that is just hands up. Taking punishment. <laughs> yeah, well, that style only works if you're strong. You've got power. If you yeah. can break people down, then it works. Yes. But if you don't have that power, you just take a lot of punishment for not much reward. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. And obviously, Tevin Farmer, 29 and 4 and a draw. He beat Galumi Frenoir, 46 and 1 and a draw. That's a good win for him, isn't it? I don't know if you managed to watch this, but the thing with Tevin Farmer is you know, yeah. these guys where they're not going to be I love watching because from a technical perspective he does a lot of things which are brilliant, they're cool, but he's not entertaining enough for people to want to watch him. Yeah. I could, if you go back, when Hearn first signed him and people getting excited, I said, British fans are going to realise what everyone else has known for years about Ted mm. Farm. Mm. You get excited about the defence, you get excited about all of this stuff, but then there are no stoppages. There's no stoppages, he doesn't really hurt anyone, and then you get bored. At least with Mayweather, Mayweather hurt people. Uh, Mayweather hurt people, you know he hurt people because yeah. bigger guys like Canelo couldn't walk him down. So Mayweather had enough in his fist to hurt people. I just don't think Farmer, I think Farmer's just more concerned with not getting hit and, you know, try, almost trying to sneak his way to unification. And on my attitude, he hasn't done enough. Let him fight someone. Let him fight one of these real killers like Miguel. And let's see if if he's still got those delusions of being on this piece after that. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's got a belt, and it's farmer now. He's still got that belt, and he into that. Ah, um, fantastic to find a soft belt, get your fighter in for it, and that's all he does. But you essentially just buy belts, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. He's, he can he can get as many world champions as he wants, but like he's not taking any from debut though to world title. Like, I know I always go on about this. In thirty three year Matchroom have had five world champions. Herbie Hyde and for Barry and Eddie's had four, and he we know uh, Yafai, Joshua, Callum Smith and Charlie Edwards, but they're all XGB team up Sheffield. So when's he gonna do it with somebody from the streets or do it with some? Was... Questionable wins, eh? They're all questionable wins. Yeah, they are, aren't they? And, 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 and this is the point where, you know, the, the fans that dislike me will say I'm a match from hater, but Joshua essentially bought a belt off Charles Martin, right? Mm. Yeah. He tried one his belt off God knows who, but it wasn't it wasn't anyone that boxed in the in the Superfly tournament. You know what I mean? He, he, and he still managed to avoid all of those guys from the Superfly tournament. And then you look at Callum Smith, he fought with George Gross as one half who was still in the fight before he realised he couldn't be bothered to box anymore. The only real one there is the Charlie Edwards win where you're like, I thought he did well to win that one. But the other one, there's kind of like a question mark where you're like, Bleh. we still haven't seen the definitive fights in their careers yet for me. Joshua hasn't had a definitive fight. He hasn't fought anyone of his generation in my eyes at their peak. Like, the Wilder fight, the Fury fight that hasn't happened. Callum Smith hasn't fought anyone of his generation at their peak yet. He hasn't yeah. had his career defining fight. Yeah, we fought Groves, didn't he, Terry? But Groves had one arm. Yeah. Because Groves just did it to get the money and get out of the game. That's really why he went through with that final, just to get that paycheck and get out of the game. Yeah. And then you look at your five. We, we don't even know who your five's beating it. And I know there are fans of the smaller weight class who will sound ignorant about this. I just know the guys from the super from the super fly tournament. That's who I know. And your fight hasn't fought any of those yet, so he hasn't had a career to fight in win yet. And then Charlie Edwards is just on his way now, so we're hoping we get that career defining win for him as well. And this is kind of where we're at with Matchroom. Matchroom don't do career defining fights unless they can just shark the fans for thirty quid on pay per view. Well, I mean, I've heard a little rumour today that uh, people are talking about Ruiz Joshua being £25. Man, I wouldn't be surprised if it's £30. You're joking me? No, I would not be surprised if well, it's £30. A, but, but they put an unbelievable stack card on a great night out. Mm, well, let's see what they do with it. Let's see 
where the fight ends up first and foremost, right? Do you think it'll end up at Cardiff, Terry? No, I don't think so. No. no. I, I don't. I don't see Ruiz agreeing to that. And the only thing that will make Ruiz take this rematch is this: he can't be bothered to go to court. So I think between both sides, they're going to have to find a way to keep everyone happy. I think Ruiz will be happy in New York or Vegas. I think Joshua will be happy in New York or Vegas. So let's make that happen. Hurd will just be annoyed and Sky will be annoyed because they don't get that money. Yeah. So... Because you know Heyman will want his guys on that card as well. They'll be like, well, hold on. It's not just you that's going to put people on this card. Heyman will want some of his guys on there too. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Al Heyman, uh, I think, personally, or should I say, I wouldn't put it past him. I wouldn't put it past them saying, look, we've got five belts in America, let's just dig our heels in and see how many we can hold on to. It's the playing hardball, all of them, aren't they? I mean, Hearn, state, after 19 seconds into his interview in the ring, he said, we're, we're activating the rematch. He'd not even spoke to Joshua. He'd already said, we're activating it, and he stayed on there, didn't he, to sort it. So that, to me, shows weakness. Also, mate, we've discussed this before, where we've said, I don't know what the agreement is between Hearn and Joshua, but Hearn controls Joshua. He will give interviews saying, yeah, AJ and his team make the decision. But I don't believe that's true for one second. I no. just don't. Because if him and his team made decisions, why would you sign with Hearn? You don't need Hearn. You could go to any network. If Fury can get 80 million from ESPN, what do you think Joshua would have got with all the belts? Yeah. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. They, they've got something over it. That's, all, that, that's the only thing we can say is that they're offering him some kind of protection, and so that's why he sticks around. Now, it wouldn't be surprise, wouldn't surprise me if there's some murky behind the scenes business behind, involving Joshua. It would not surprise me. Yeah, it wouldn't me either. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Terry, about uh, people saying that Tyson Fury's only got one more fight left with Frank Warren? What do you think to that and that he might not re-sign? This is just something that's, you know, I have a, a couple of people who I want to chat about today and he still hasn't signed a new deal with him, but he's got a deal with uh, Aram. Um, so my question is, if you're Tyson, Tyson's a boxing historian, he understands the game, he understands the pitfalls of the game, obviously, because of what he's been through, he's asking himself two questions. One, do I even need the UK? Probably not. Number two, how am I giving so many people a cut of my income? How? That's, 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 that's what Tyson should be asking himself. How am I giving all these people a cut of my income? I don't need to be giving as many people in my income. I can just sign with Bob Arum. BT Sport and Box Nation will still take, will still take the fight. So why not? So, he doesn't really need Frank. I know that sounds cruel and it sounds cold, but he doesn't really need Frank. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah. He doesn't need Frank for the simple reason uh, he's already got millions on it now, he's coining it in, isn't he? Also, if you're going to be fighting America, right? Yeah. Why do you need a British promoter, right? They're not going to make any money off the 4am fight time, do you know what I mean? So, he doesn't really need to be handing money over to someone who does not generate the income in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose it's... Uh, it's Tyson Fury's like not going to... He's never going to have to worry about money ever again, is he, now? Don't be so sure. No? Well, let's say for, in, let's say for instance that Tyson Fury... Uh, ends up leaving Frank Warren. Who is he going to go to in England for English leg of his pay per view money? Whoever he wants, right? Yeah, he could just do a fight at a time wherever he wants and cut his own deal, couldn't he? Yeah. No, I, don't, I, don't see that being, I don't see that being impossible. Look, you're seeing Aram and Hearn working together to make fights happen. 
I can see Top Rank and Sky on occasion going right. Or put this on your platform. Yeah, that puts and that puts uh, Bob Frank Warren out of the way, doesn't it? And you'd have to feel sorry for Frank on that, wouldn't you, really? I'm sure Frank would be looked after financially. Yeah. The, the thing with Fury right now, I think everyone's eating off this. I don't know if Tyson's eating off it yet, but everyone's eating off this. This renaissance of Tyson Fury. This, this almost like a rebirth, a resurrection of Tyson Fury. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting times, mate, isn't it? It's uh, boxing's uh, going in a, in a weird direction at the moment, isn't it, Terry? It's changing, isn't it, by the by the day. It, it's that whole principle of chaos, isn't it? That if you let things happen without central control and rules, right, everything just goes off in its own direction. So, turns going off in this crazy direction that we don't agree with. Terry, in my opinion, and in Dennis's, because I've just been up there today, five hour bloody meeting, but uh, I swear to God, we agree, we think that 2019 has been worse than 2016. Because it promised so much this year, didn't it? Once they lose these casuals, it'll go back to 2001, won't it, like it was then? Yeah, it's like the days of Brentford Leisure Centre and all that. Sort yeah, of and the real class of 2002, McKennessy. Ah. Uh. <laughs> hey, they were not wrong with 2000, class of two, 2002. Lee Meager, Dave Walker, Davey Day were bouncing about, one he round about that time. Frotch, uh, Darren Barker, Audrey Harrison. <laughs> Massive, wouldn't it? That would have been the biggest fight in heavyweight history. Oh, it would have been bigger than Ali Fraser won, wouldn't it? Yeah, social media would have been a fight. But we all know that Ruiz is not really that guy. We know that Joshua got beat. 
beaten by a guy that's not really world class. We know that. Because we've never thought of Ruiz as being world class. No, we haven't, no. Now all of a sudden Ruiz has got this reputation of this guy that were robbed, massively robbed in New Zealand when I thought it could have gone either way, but massively robbed and he's this technician and he's a surgeon. I mean, I've heard people on social media talking, using the word surgeon. When you think of surgeon, you think of Pernell Whitaker or uh, Andre Ward, don't you? They're surgeons, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. And the reason not that reason is a hard man. Yeah. He's a hard man and that mental resilience that he has, that, that ability to to overcome adversity positively is what broke Joshua down. Yeah. The fact that he wouldn't take a backward step when Joshua tried everything is what scared Joshua mind. Because everyone else he'd ever hit has just gone backwards and the reason was taking the approach of, no, I'll keep coming. Yeah. You're right, mate. You're exactly right. Uh, but uh, do you think so? Do you think Ruiz Joshua will happen? But you don't know where, Terry. What are you going to go on record and say? Uh, so wait, we're, we're going to touch on the Dillian thing later on. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get to that. That's the uh, main course, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but listen, listen. Let's not delay too long because you know some of these guys complain that we don't get to the point quickly. No. Well, this is why I'm going to put it into four parts like last time and let them all have a treat. <laughs> <laughs> you little nibble. A little nibble, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. This Dillian thing has brought Goku to the fore. Right? Yeah. So now Joshua's got to be tested, number one. Number two, it turns out that UK are pretty good. I don't think that was good. I can't say UK are pretty good. Whatever laboratory is, they use in London. I think it's the... Is it the James Clark Maxwell building or the Franklin building? in South East London where they said I know where the lab actually is where they do all the testing that you can yeah they're good because if they caught that that tiny trace of down upon them far they didn't and I don't think they use the same lab then you can see Joshua trying to swerve you can you don't but now now the fans are telling you you need to be tested by you can because we trust them and if that's the case and Joshua is taking anything I'm not saying he is but if he was going to be taking anything for the ruling side, you might not want to do it now. So how will that affect him in his training camp? Will he now get nervous, a bit insecure, a bit nervous that I can't do what I normally do? And then we then go, oh, we're going to take a tune up instead because I don't feel confident. Don't know. But these are all interesting thoughts to see what's going to happen. Because they have to announce it soon enough, right? Because if it's November, they're going to announce it in the next two or three weeks. Even if it's December, in the next three or four weeks. Yeah, it's got to be announced, hasn't it? It's got to be announced. Uh, so, uh, so the answer to your question is, I wouldn't be surprised if Joshua takes a tune-up. A tune-up, but if he takes a tune-up, does that mean that Ruiz can take a tune-up? Don't know what the contract is. All oh, right. Unless they agree to another contract, which then says you both get one fight, and then. Joshua, well, Joshua fight the winner of that Ruiz fight. That, that would have to be the contract. What if, right, what if, uh, all of a sudden Al Heyman turns around and says, do you know what, if you're threatening to strip us of these belts, take them all and we'll just fight, we'll just fight Wilder, but the fans know we've got the win over Joshua. He could leave Joshua high and dry. To have the belts took off him, Joshua gets him back, but Joshua still doesn't get the win over Ruiz. What do you think to that? I would say Joshua's in the same position he is again, where there are now two people that claim that Joshua's got belts that they have a legitimate claim to. Because now, now Tyson Fury and Andy Ruiz are sharing the same message. So now you, now you effectively have three guys Ruiz, Fury, Wilder at the top of that tree. Yeah. Right? And they can all just box each other because they don't need to work with matching or just own. So now you've got three credible heavyweights who can have all kinds of fights against each other and they can just keep Joshua frozen out of it. Well, do you think that's possible? Because now that Heyman's uh, cozying up with Aaron, what do you think? Well, there you go. That's, that's the whole point. So Heyman brings Wilder and Ruiz and Aaron brings Fury. 
Yeah, it could it could end that it could go that way, you know, because I'm already pool left. Uh, Team Bob Arum, they're putting spoking, aren't they? So it looks to me like Arum and Heyman's lot are all working together, and Warren, it looks like them three have all teamed up on poor little Edward. Yeah, because let's, let's, let's cut the nonsense aside, right? If Ruiz were to scatter <coughs> the belts, he would have been fighting someone. Yeah. Right? Because he's going to in limbo him Joshua needs Andy Ruiz more than Andy Ruiz beats him because he's got the win over him hasn't he yep Ruiz could just say I'm going to vacate these belts and then Herm's like well no don't do that and then Herm's like well I'm going to vacate the belts and then Herm's like well I'm going to vacate the belts and then Herm's like well I'm going to vacate the belts and then Herm's like well I'm going to yeah, because he could let them belts get took off him now and split up. They could go to everybody. We could end up with seven people saying they're all world champion, couldn't we? Yeah, so, so, so and you remember the governing bodies have to sanction these fights as well. Mm. Like, if you look at the UFC, right, they can't say, Yeah, that's because that could end up happening, couldn't it? And that would be a, uh, I don't know, we all just want one champion, Terry, don't we? We Even just for one fight, you know, Wilder against Ruiz, can we just have it for one fight? And the winner is then the man, and then if the belts go, we're not bothered because we will always have the man until he's beat, and then we can go, he beat the man, who beat the man. We can start again, can't we? Exactly. With this Laniel stuff that... You know, Stig and all these merry men, and they are fanatics. You know, the truth. Not is it? Well, I forget, it's not the truth. Tell what they can. Oh, he's against Stig, isn't he? I forget him on Twitter. Who have a little pop at Stig? He's only banter, but Oasis One and Robert Britton, who uh, YouTube messages uh, our, our videos all the time. There's people who who, who who follow Tyson Fury, and good luck to him. Good luck to them if they follow them. There's nothing wrong with following somebody and supporting them, but this Laniel thing, I just want it to just start again and we can have one champion and just go from there, can't we? Because at the moment, it's, it's all... It looks like it's going worse, Terry. But, as fans, we want one champion, but when you're a promoter, you're like, I'd have you quite like four champions. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because TV like it, don't they? And that's the tension. The tension is there. What the fans were, what the promoters were, do not line up. Yeah, yeah, it's craziness, isn't it? It's craziness. But where do you see Terry, the middleweight division ending up? What do you see happening with middleweight division? Uh, listen, I, I'd like to see Liam Cameron become undisputed. Would you? Yeah, nothing would be happier. No, I'm joking. Um, Good luck to Liam Cameron, would love to see him with the British. But in terms of middleweight, um, I don't think Canelo fights Golovkin. I don't think he needs to. And I don't think the zone can force him to do so either. Oh, yeah. So they might have to pay him a bit more money to have the Golovkin fight. Yeah, so... It's an absolute disaster by the zone, hasn't it? Yeah, Canelo, Canelo is the number one middleweight in the world, right? 
and he's also got a WBA regular belt for super middle but we, we, his last fight, Daniel Jacobs, IBF, WBA, WBC on the line. The, the, the only real belts that anybody cares about. Yeah, the WBO's in the mix, but uh, Eddie Hearn's got that, and he, but it's by default, isn't it, really? Canelo's the man at middleweight, isn't he? Yeah, I don't know if he's got from Botswana. I didn't even know they boxed from Botswana. The only guy from Botswana I know that boxes is a kid called Echo Esselman, based in Nottingham. Hell of a talent at 147. Yeah. Put, put him in with Tyrone Nurse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, while, while I've got you online and we're talking middleweights and WBC and that, what do you think about Julio Cesar Chavez Jr.? Right? He fights Evet Bravo in uh, Mexico on the 10th of August. It's his first fight since 2017 when Alvarez beat him. What do you think? What do you think about his comeback, Chavez? Is it because he sells tickets? Yeah, he's just coming back for the buzz. Doesn't need the money. Doesn't need the status. He's just coming back for the buzz, I guess. He's 33 years old, and uh, he's coming back, and he's going to be fighting at super middleweight. Oh, God. I know, yeah, it's... Uh, he's two year out of the ring. Over two year. 27 months out of the ring. He's fighting on San Juan de los Lagos. Salon de Amante Premier. Like I said, the guy he's fighting is... Ranked 450 in the world at super middleweight. And he's ranked the fifth best... Colombian in the world. It's the fifth best in Colombia, sorry. So he's got 10 losses, 25 wins, and a draw. 53% KO ratio. That's where Chavez is. Can you see why Carl Froch were gagging for that fight in Vegas? Can't you? Eh? It would have been an easy payday for Carl Froch, that, wouldn't it? If Eddie Hearn had, 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 had uh, bought and had paid the million pound to Bob Arum to get the contract freed up, because Bob Arum dug his heels in, saying, "No, no, no, Eddie, he's still got a fight left uh, on his contract with me, and it's going to be a million dollars." Well, obviously, it didn't work out for Carl, did it? That it didn't work out. He he ended up going and fighting um, what were we called? Uh, Rafael Career he fought him. I mean, what role? Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Not Rafael Career. Sorry, I've got the wrong one here. 2015 it would have been. 2014. What did he fight now? Oh yeah, he fought Fonfara, didn't he? He fought Fonfara when he should have been fighting Froch. He lost. He lost to Fonfara. Well, that was the fight that Carl Froch should have fought him on that that date. You know, he. he that's when he should have fought, uh, but he, didn't, he obviously he didn't fight him. But Carl Froch should have fought Chevez in Vegas, but instead they fought in Carson for the the vacant WBC international at light heavyweight. And for, he were there for the taking, and, and Carl obviously had got to finish his career in Vegas. So I'm gutted for that. I'm gutted about that. But I think it's just embarrassing. He's embarrassing the family name coming back now, and he's a former. WBC middleweight champion. I think he's just embarrassing. Uh, he's, he's just embarrassing this. You know, it's not, but it's, it's slightly unfair because he really, how many defeats has he got on his record? Three? He's 53 and a draw, yeah. Right, who he lost to? Canelo. Martinez, Fonfara, and Alvarez. They're not bad defeats to have on your record. Is Fon Far a world class, would you say? Nah, he was fringe. But remember, this was at 175, though, right? So, so Chavez Jr. moved up two weight classes to have this fight against a natural light heavy. Would you say Fon Far, uh, he beat Nathan Cleverly, didn't he? Beat yeah, Chad yeah. Dawson. Uh, he no, beat no, that, wasn't the, that wasn't the Chad Dawson we know. 
Yeah, yeah. It wasn't the Chad Dawson that were, were, were going through everybody and schooling people, were it, back in the day. He beat Byron Mitchell. He's actually got some decent wins on his record when you go through from far as uh, Gabriel Campillo. Do you know what I mean? He beat, he beat Glenn Johnson, right? Beat Glenn Johnson as well. There you go, and that's my point. So, from far as not a bad defeat to have, especially when you've jumped up two weight classes. And you probably jumped up two weight classes because you're too lazy to do a proper count. Yeah. Those three defeats aren't, it's not like you got beat by someone like a. Uh, Oh, I don't know if he beat Glenn Johnson. I can't, I, I can't remember him beating Glenn Johnson. He beat Byron. Yeah, he did. I think he, yeah, he beat Glenn Johnson. Let me just check. Yeah, yeah, yeah he beat him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He beat. Yeah, he beat him after Byron Mitchell. He beat Glenn Johnson when Glenn Johnson were on slide though after Super Six. Because after Froch beat Glenn Johnson, he were on slide, wasn't he? Nah, no, I need to say that. <laughs> Clinton had three fights with Glenn Johnson, you know. Yeah, so I think I think after the Clinton fight, Glenn Johnson was on the slide. I think Froch got him on the slide. Yeah, but he beat Alan Green before Froch fought him. Nah, stop trying to stop trying to clean up Froch. <laughs> anyway, moving on, Terry. Moving on. <laughs> we'll move. We'll move on. Right, lad. Yo, right, hey, we've got a rate story here. Right. Let me just sit up now and take some deep breaths for all you hardcores out there. Are you ready for this? First of all, I don't want anybody to think that I am gloating, because I'm not, because this is how I look at it. Dillian White has failed a drug test, we was told, right? We was told he failed a drug test. Now we're saying he, uh, there was a problem with a drug test, but at first we read in the Daily Mail and we heard from Thomas Hauser, right, who's emailed me today, Right, we've heard from Thomas Hauser now, and you've got that email. I've forwarded it. Yeah, he's, he he ain't saying anything. He's too professional, and he's a lawyer. But I've been emailing Thomas Hauser for a few years. I think there's a bit of trust there. He uh, he subscribes to Porky's Corner, so he says whether he watches my videos or not, I don't know. But I like him, and he's got respect. For Spencer Fearon to call him a nut job is a disgrace. But I've wrote some notes down here. The 28th of July, which was Wednesday, I believe. Sorry, sorry, no, tw not 28th of July. Uh, the 29th, the 29th, the 24th, the 24th of July, there's a drug test come back from Varda to Eddie Earn saying that Dillian White's failed for Diana Ball. Is that correct, Terry, from what we're led to believe? Wait, say that again. 24th of July, Dillian White, is, there's a problem with his A sample for Diana Ball. So Thomas Hauser's saying, uh, on the 24th of July, that's the Wednesday, isn't it? I think you're a week off, mate. I think it was the 17th. Well, it's 17th? Yeah. Have I got that? I thought it was the week leading up to the fight. Hang on, what date is it today? 29th. Oh, well, I was led to believe, uh, listening to that pod last night, that it were 20... Well, either way, leading up to the fight, he's failed the test. And I'm not going to go into what fucking exact minute it was, because you can get it wrong with misinformation. Right. Dillian White's failed the test, or something's happened, and they've had to get border control and have meetings and all this, aren't they? Now... Dillian White's obviously he's not going to admit anything, is he? Is it a mistake or has he been juicing or what? We're not going to know, are we? But the silence is killing it all, isn't it? What do you think? Oh, man. It's... We have to put friendships aside, obviously. You know, you you know the people involved. I I know the people involved. I'm I'm of the opinion that. I feel for his training team because I know Mark Tibbs and Jimmy Tibbs. I like Dillian White. I like his story. I was critical about him fighting Parker on pay per view. Yeah, and I still stand by that because I'm going on what is the criteria for pay per view. Dillian White's not even fought for a European title. He's got a British title at home that he won in a vacant belt against Ian Lewinson. So. Yeah. 
So this is how I look at it. He's not world title fights back. He now could miss the boat. He's had a two-year ban on his record. Whether he were at fault or not, they're saying he wasn't at fault. He were. He, he'd already been given the ban anyway by this stage, and they weren't budging on it. But they allowed him at a later date to say, "Yeah, you're not at fault. You took it not knowingly, right?" Well, as Dillian White took something not knowingly, or or is the dark forces at work as Dillian White being spiked or is the dark forces is there something going on because there's a lot of conspiracy theories going around Terry and like I said I just want to see British guys move forward in boxing people like Dillian but if, if it's cheating it's bad if it's sabotage it affects everybody doesn't it because he's got a training team there Mark Tibbs has gone 10-0 with him He's changed him as a fighter, and he's done well for him, man. Do, do we agree on that, Terry? Yeah, he's been he's been the right kind of influence for him. But there are going to be casualties, aren't they, if he gets banned? Say that again. Mark Tibbs is going to be a casualty if he gets banned, isn't he? Because to say people are tipping Mark Tibbs, aren't they, for trainer at year in England, right? But what's going to happen now? He's going to it's going to put. Mark in a bad light, innit? If this has got any If if this has got this story goes to full hog and the B sample comes back and it's dirty, it's positive, it's gonna have an effect on the team, isn't it? Okay, right. I think let's not run before we can walk. And yeah. let's not talk about walk through yeah. what what we know and what we can figure out. Yeah, yeah. Um, we now know there's been an incident with UK anti-doping, right? We everyone agrees on that. Yeah. We don't know what that incident is. Yeah. No one can own. So the, there are only two possibilities, right? Well, that's the, then let's go through all the possibilities there are. Yeah. There, there are three possibilities. Sorry. Yeah. The A sample is positive, and the B sample is positive. Then there's no reason. I mean, then. And it's just a question of what's the punishment. Yeah. Right? The A sample's positive, the B sample's negative. Then there's no case to answer, so there's no need for a hearing. Yeah. And if the A sample is negative, therefore there's no need to have a hearing at all, right? Yeah. So those three options, only one of them is really viable, and it's that the A sample is somehow positive, either they know the B sample is positive or we haven't tested the B sample yet. So I believe they haven't tested the B sample only because it takes ages to get these things tested and then remember you've got five or six people that have to sign off on one of these test results yeah. because the lab don't want to get sued. So they'll get their top expert to look at all the evidence, look at all the testing and make sure it was done correctly and make sure those findings can't be anything else other than a positive. So, that hearing was, I suspect, the hearing was simply to say, look, the A sample may be positive, we need to test the B sample, this fight can't be stopped because we don't know if he's guilty yet. Yeah. So if we don't know that he's guilty, the fight has to carry on. I imagine that was the, what the hearing said, I imagine there was some harsh work put in there saying, look, if you cancel this fight and you've messed up, yeah. you'll be lying. Well, that was said. That was said. I know that for a fact. That was said. Uh, to be, I think the British Boxing Board of Control are too aloof and it's an old boys club, but I have also heard that one person at the board somebody whispered into his ear and said, look, if you cancel this there'll be lawsuits like you can never imagine if that sample comes back negative, that B sample. And I think they panicked, a bit like uh, they haven't passed over certain things and when, when people have got a bit heavy with them. And I, that's what I think, but... Well, but... but I think people forget that UCAD are responsible for all sports, right? Yeah. So rugby, weightlifting... Football... Yeah. They can't, be, they can't afford to have four or five lawsuits running in parallel. They don't have the finances for that. So if they can avoid a conflict, they will. And what UKED probably did is say, well, it won't be our problem. If it comes out that he's been doping, it becomes a promoter's problem. So we're happy to let the fight go ahead because that's where the lawsuit will go. So 
So it's all very tactical at this point. So by Saturday, it's really tactical. The UK are saying, we've done our job. We stand behind our result. We're happy to test the B sample before we can't test it for at least a week. Fine. The British board have said, we don't want to get sued. So we're going to kick the ball over to Eddie Hearn. And we're going to say, let the fight go ahead. Because if Dillian was found guilty, then the lawsuit goes to Eddie Hearn and not the board. Because the board will say, we couldn't stop the fight because we hadn't had all the information. Yeah. Eddie Hearn had the duty of care. Eddie Hearn had the moral duty, the duty of good faith is probably what you would sue under to say, you had the duty of good faith in the interest of maintaining fighter health to notify the opposition that there was an issue. And he chose not to grasp that opportunity, which I think has left Eddie really exposed. And exposed? He's in a very vulnerable position now, isn't he? I mean, we've took advice today, we spoke to two different legal people, and he could be in a really... There's a, hey, I'll tell you what, Eddie Hearn's boxing career could be riding on that B sample. In so many different ways, you're probably right. Yeah. It's the biggest thing to happen in the sport, according to certain people, for since the Don King, when Don King nearly went down in the 90s and he signed everything over to Warren, didn't he, to run it, and then he got a not guilty, then he tried to get everything back and they ended up falling out, didn't they? It's the biggest thing to happen since then, people are saying. No, I won't go that far, because it's not like he was found, you know, had he been found with the stuff Jerome Miller was found with, it absolutely. I think we're dealing with no, I'm on about the Hearn situation and, and the board and all that because if the board gets sued, they could be out of business. Exactly. This is what people are saying at the moment. The last time it happened like this, Barry Hearn put a show on, Michael Watson got injured, the board got sued for negligence due to some medical things and they had to sell that building in London and move to Cardiff, didn't they? Yeah. That's the lot, that's the lot, they had to pay Watson a million pound, didn't they? But look, I think, I think we can, we can focus on giving her a kicking, and I think he should take a kicking, but I think there are wider issues around this one as well that we need to be aware of. Number one, the question number one is, did Dillian cheat for the reverse fight? Yeah. I don't believe he did. No. You don't believe he did? No. I, I don't. don't. Here's why. Too much at stake, isn't there? No, no, just just common sense. So, Diana Ball has a half life of six hours, Russell. Is that all? Yeah, that's why Diana Ball is something you can take once a day, twice a day. It has a really short half life. So, if you found a million, one part in a million of Diana Ball, right? Just keep doubling up going backwards. It'll only take about six days for you to have a shitload of Diana Ball in you. So if he's saying that he was tested by VADA on these dates and there was nothing in there, and he was tested subsequent and he was clean on those ones, then you draw the conclusion there kind of been that much Diana Ball in him before. Yeah. Now, we'll come back to why Diana Ball's a worry drug in a second, but... If he had that one part per million, the question is, where did it come from? Yeah. I still believe that was just stored in his fat cells. Because one of the things we begin to realize about fat cells is, it's where your body puts stuff that it doesn't know what to do with. Yeah. That's why when you look at animals sometimes, yeah, you look at like a steel blubber, or, you know, or whale blubber, that's where you find a lot of the heavy metal, like the mercury. Because your body goes, we don't need the fat cells for anything, really. We can just pump stuff in here until we need them. So I imagine at some point, Dillian's just been exercising, he's burnt off the wrong fat cells, and then released whatever down of all was in him. Now we come to the point. At some point, Dillian White has taken down of all. Yeah. But, but it might not have been this last week or something, do you think? Yeah. It might not have been in the last year. But it, were age, it probably ages ago, and it's popped back out again, do you think? Yeah. Could it have been when he were banned before and this, this thing has been released that's been 
stored in his body and it's just come out somewhere and there's a tiny bit tiny bit and it could it have been 2014 or when that band were or something it's, it's possible Russ, but there's no science to support that yeah don't last that. so if that b sample is positive has he got a problem Yeah, 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 go on, yeah. Okay, so, if the beat sample comes back positive, what, similar amount? Yeah. They'll say he had it before, and we don't know when he had it before. We can't, you can't really pinpoint that. And we don't know where it's come out of. We can suspect it's a bat cell, because that's where the scientific research is pointing to. But we don't know definitively. Yeah. So what can't be debated if the beat sample comes up positive is that took it at some point and that's why I wish we had the honesty where if Billy had just said you know what years ago I might have taken it it might have spiked but in this camp I've been clean in my last four camps I've been clean and Vardar have shown it because they use Vardar as evidence but the Vardar testing is only viable evidence if they test it in the same lab I don't believe the Vardar test were tested in the same lab mm. I don't, I don't know, but I suspect that Biden will test in the labs that they feel comfortable with, which is probably American labs, and that doesn't mean that they all have the same equipment and they have the same techniques. Yeah. So it's really interesting that because now we'll realise that maybe UCAT have the better laboratory. So do we not have to put all our boxes through UCAT? So, mm. so this is why this is an absolute shamble now, because we, we can deduce logically that there was something in it that says Dynabol and no one's denied it. Here's why Dynabol is an issue, right? You never take Dynabol on its own. Yeah. Because it shuts you down. Yeah. It shuts down your testosterone production. It shuts down your sperm production. So you have to be taking something with it to soften the blood. That's what we should be worried about here, is that if there's Dynabol in you, there's probably two or three other substances. There's probably like a Trembolone in there and a version of testosterone in there as well. These are the questions people should be asking. What else What else could, would he have been taking at that point? This is when you want to start looking at WhatsApp messages, text messages, phone calls, to work out who was doing what. And not just Zillian, but the whole camp, the whole team, all those guys in Loughborough. Let them reveal their phone records. And let's find out what was being discussed. What, you think it's going to be that serious, Terry? You don't... Don't think about any other conspiracy. You want enough people to make it work, but not too many people that it leaks out. So there are a number of people who know what really went on. Yeah. They've got the integrity to come forward and be honest about it. Because if nothing else, for the good of the sport, Dillian has to cop a band. I have nothing against Dillian. This isn't about Dillian, this is about the sport. Yeah. For the good of the sport, he has to cop a ban. Because if nothing else, he's careless. Yeah. And that's what you should be punished for, for being careless in a privileged position of being an elite athlete. You were careless in how you chose to prepare. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that... Uh I don't know, what do you think Chisora and all them think about it and fucking Tony Bellew and all them? I mean, they're all very quiet, aren't they? Davey Day, what do they think about it? And remember, they've got to deal with Dillian. So they have to be careful in how they word it because it could get very awkward when you see the person. So I would suspect people are waiting for that beat sample. Once the beat sample's in, it's open season. And I'm not trying to hear all of this, we need to wait for the appeal moments. We don't. Yeah. If an A sample is positive, and a B sample is positive, it's just accepted. That's a guilty plea. Yeah. I'm not trying to hear about any spike supplements. You can't spike a supplement with Dynabol. It's positive. A Dynabol is like, it's a, it's a coated tablet, right? Yeah. So, the active ingredient isn't on the surface, because otherwise your stomach acid would suck with it. So how, how are you getting Dynabol in your system? The Nandrolone is castrated wild boar, but you find Nandrolone in your degrees of it in your system anyway. Because 
Tron was never intended for medicinal use, ever. Back in the, I think it was the, after the war, right, when they started up the Olympics again, yeah. the Americans couldn't understand why the Russians were so strong. But what it turns out is, the Russians and the Germans had been looking for ways to make their soldiers stronger. So with ministering testosterone in various forms, the Russians then took this and made it into an industry. And were doping their weightlifters. And that's why they were dominating weightlifting in the 50s. So the Americans went back and the American company was Siva Geigy. That was the, the pharmaceutical company that developed Dynabol. And so they had that in the early 60s. And the Americans started to win weightlifting contests again. This is how serious it is, Russell. Yeah. The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration in America, told Siva Geigy, you have to give us some medicinal benefits for this if you want to sell it. You can't just sell it as a means of getting stronger. That tells you what this was designed for. So you don't get it by accident. You don't. You can't get a therapeutic use exemption for down in the ball because they don't give you down in the ball for anything. It's liver toxic, so you wouldn't give someone that unless you, you just wouldn't. There are better solutions to that problem than down in the ball. Yeah. I feel for his team though, like I feel for we Chris Smedley, you know, tra who trains Liam Cameron and my pals. I feel for Chris with, with Liam and that. I know Liam's Liam Cameron's uh, appealed, his appeal's gone through and they're saying he can fight pending appeal, so that's good, isn't it? But I just think it's just, I don't know, it's all a bit of a waste, isn't it? People well, getting banned and stuff like that. And I think the, the, the Liam Cameron scenario is different because he got pinged for cocaine. And you can create any sort of story to say, actually, do you know what? He might have been doing stuff he shouldn't be, have been doing. He might have been bagging yeah. up some clothes or whatever. And again, from your fingers, you wipe your nose, you lick your lips, whatever you do, and it's in you, right? I'm not going to cry about that. Shit happens. You should still get a bit of a slap on the wrist, but shit happens. Yeah. The iron ball's different. Like, you, no one takes the iron ball at a house party or, or at a nightclub. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. When you get Dynabol, you're getting Dynabol. That's yeah. what you've gone out to get. There's no accident about it. Yeah. It's not good, is it? Well, hey. I think you and I talked about it earlier. The yeah. great thing about this is we've smoked out any home potential defenders Joshua ever got caught taking drugs. Oh. We, 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 this, is like a, this is like a dress rehearsal. We now know we can get any hurt on this. We know he's not strong on this one. He's definitely not strong. Yeah. So, God help Joshua if he ever fails the drugs test because boxing Twitter will go for her in a way. And it's more anti her than anti doping at the moment, I think. I think it's just, you know, we're glad to see him get his face slapped and then we don't like his smug response because he's been all over the place in America. You know what? He'll be glad to get to Liverpool. Like, I don't think anyone has ever said that in their life, but he'll be glad to get to Liverpool, where he can just hide away from reality for a bit. Yeah, I wonder what Ronald McIntosh thinks about it all. I don't know, man. He'll, he'll have really long words to describe it, though. I just think it's a bit of a mess and you know what I'm bothered about? You know the silence, because we've had silence haven't we? I mean, I, I mean everybody knows my feelings to all Carl Frotch, but Carl's not said anything about it. it it's took people like Spencer Fearon to come out and you know I even saw something on, on, a, on, a, on a social media thing where Purple Aki, that, that, that nutcase from Liverpool and who uh, has been an oddball, he was coming out voicing his opinion. Everybody's voiced an opinion except, you, you know, the people like Derek Chisora, Tony Bellew and Eddie Earn and Calla Sowland's not said a word. Frank Warren's said his piece but Calla Sowland hasn't said anything. Dave Caldwell's not said anything. David Hayes not said anything. Dominic Ingle. Kel Brook, Kim Galahad, none of them have said anything. Do you know what I mean? These are all people with, with question marks over them. So why, why would you speak? Paul Smith hasn't said anything. He usually says something, doesn't he? Paul Smith. Yeah, and this is my point. Adam Smith's not said no. Callum Johnson hasn't said anything. Clint. Uh, 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 we get the point. Yeah. Clint. Yeah. <laughs> so the point that I'm making is that you match 
Liverpool are very clever in how they look after their co-commentators, right? Yeah. I imagine Matthew has enough stories on those guys that could leak to the press. Yeah. That they know that a lot of these guys dare not say anything in case their business gets exposed. You reckon, yeah? I can, I can, I will suspect that there are stories of Tony Bellew not behaving like a family man that he's corrupted. I, I suspect there's stories like that. I suspect there are stories of David Hay not behaving like a suave gentleman, you know, the way he wants to be known as. I, I suspect it's the same with Joshua, and it might be the same with a few of the other guys, where there are stories that could come out about them if they rock the boat. Spencer Fear is just a guy that. I doubt there's any dirt on it that hasn't been shared before, so he can say what the hell he wants, and Sky don't really care about him, do they? No, the, uh, they've wheeled him out, haven't they, and he's said Thomas Howes is a nut job, well, and he's going about Rivers as drug test, and... Yeah, and I, I thought that was disgraceful, and I, and I guess this is why Sky don't put Spencer Field in front of the camera. Yeah. He was disrespectful to Thomas Howes, I genuinely believe that if between me and Thomas Hauser don't know about it, it probably didn't happen in the world of sports, don't it? Yeah. Simple. Yeah. In terms of b not failing a drug test, why don't we deal with the one that we know about first before we start trying to find out if b failed the drug test? We can yeah. come to that later. Even guys that have not, even retired boxers like James DeGale and Johnny Nelson, they've not said anything. Yeah. Coogan Cassius has not come out and said a dicky bird. Why would he? Well, he's got a media channel. Why ain't he doing videos? Well, no, but why, why would he? They already had their guy out there trying to interview her and her just shut down. So. Yeah, I suppose, you know, yeah. Sometimes you've got to leave the Americans to do our work for us. Well, like Barbershop. Fred from Barbershop, he got stuck into him, didn't he? Yeah. The only problem was he wasn't prepared enough. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have heard crime. Yeah, a proper prepared guy could have really set about her, couldn't he? No, no, not even that. There would have been one very obvious question he could have asked her. Why are they having a hearing? Why is Dinian White hiring lawyers if there is nothing wrong? If he was clear to box and everything is above board, what are the lawyers for? Yeah. Are they, are they soon for libel? If they are, cool, we don't want to talk about that. But what are the lawyers for? But it's heard of like he's trying to clear his name. But there's been no allegations, so how are you trying to clear your name? Gareth A. Davis has said nothing, has he? Wait, like, you know, Russ, we can keep bringing people out who haven't said anything, but it doesn't mean anything else from you. These are all people with bills to pay. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, I'm just shocked. Okay, there were... If I you in the in the Fury camp, you didn't rock the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just can't rock the boat as much as you want to. Yeah. Yeah. I just think that some of these people are very vocal about drugs and things and not said anything and you know, I, I hope that Dillian White gets off with this. I hope, I, I, and that it's a mistake because I, I want to see people around him do well. But it's an horrible sport, isn't it? And there's... I mean, is it possible that somebody could have it in for Dillian White, do you think? Or well, they just want to sully his reputation and... Well, you can't open it. So here's the thing, you can't doctor the test. I mean, there's a lot of sharks out there, isn't there? There's a lot of sharks out there in the boxing industry. And you can't doctor the test. Oh yeah, I know that, yeah. But once that urine is collected and the bottle sealed and you sign it, you cannot do anything to that sample. Now, if someone has done something, then we have to look at every sample that's been through UK ever. You almost have to give everyone an amnesty if it turns out that some of these samples can be doctored. So you have to go on the assumption that they can't be doctored. And if they can't be doctored, then you're saying someone fed him dinable. I'm like, how do you feed someone dinable? Yeah. And even if they fed him dinable, they'd have to feed it to him when they knew the testers were coming. Because remember, it's only about a half by six hours. So in 24 hours, like, you could be down to those sorts of untraceable amounts of needed. 
so so this Diana ball, Terry, how does he get into the system then? You take it in tablet form. Tablet form, right. So yeah. so they've got small traces the same with this Diana. This is what we're all hearing, aren't we? If this is the case and it is Dynabot and it's a small dosage, does Dillian still get done because it's a very tiny dosage? Well, it's a tiny dose of a substance that doesn't occur naturally in the human body. Right, so that means it's got there somehow, hasn't it? Yeah, so it's like, okay, so when did you ingest this? If it's meant to be in a supplement, they'll say, when did you take the supplement? Because they can work out based on the half life what the dose should be. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a sad situation, isn't it? And. But is it though? Wait, wait, wait. Is it? Is it a sad situation? If it turns out that he did take it, is it a sad situation? Well, no, it isn't. Then is it? No, it isn't. I suppose no. But well, if Dillian White's took it, and I'm not saying he has. If he's took it, he's very foolish, isn't he? Because he were getting pay-per-view fights. And they're not even world title fights. He's ruined a good thing, hasn't he? But if he, but if he's been spiked, it's bad, isn't it? Yeah. If it, if it turns out that he hasn't done anything, then you know this has been tough. But I genuinely think that Dillian White is going to take it to the boxing world. Will forgive. Yeah, I do. Yeah. By that, people forgive him because he always strikes us as being honest. Yeah. He always strikes me as somebody. After that defeat against Joshua, when he weren't 100% fit and not 100%, he had a shoulder problem, didn't he? After that, he knuckled down, he changed his team, and I think he set about making his name and doing well. And I just think, I just hope that, he's all, that he hasn't done anything foolish. But we have to wait, don't we? And you have to see what powers... But if he has done it, would he admit it anyway? Miller's admitted it, hasn't he? We had no choice. Like, the numbers in that sample were like, whoa, okay. But, but remember, whether he's bound or not will not be down to you, Ken. It will be down to the board. It's the board that will set the ban. I think Union is the board who has to follow these guidelines, so the government body sets the ban. Yeah. So are the British Boxing Board willing to derail Dillian's career, knowing that he's probably the only well, if they can get Liam Cameron four year for slight traces, a coke, one first defence, and Liam Dillian's had a two year ban, what would his punishment be the second time? Yeah. Whatever they do, they're going to be hammered. They're going to say, well, that's harsh. You've ended his career. Or, if they give him a, a six-month ban, you're going to have people like Frank Warren and everybody else say, fucking hell, if that's all he's getting, we might as well take his chances with this Diana Ball stuff, aren't we? And that's the problem. So, there's, there's, there's the concept of, of moral hazard, right? It's if, a strong if, debate, isn't it? It's a strong debate. Yeah, it's a strong debate. If you get caught doing something that you shouldn't do, and you go, right, I'm going to take this one yeah. Then why would you take drugs? It's almost at that point of boxing now where you go, I'd take my chances. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well moving on, we've we've covered the, the the Dillian White thing and we wish him all the best. Right, Dave Allen. What next for Dave Allen? He should just keep fighting people that he'll be competitive with. Is it a good fight, Dave Allen, Yui Fury, on on match match room at Sky now that Yui's gone to Sky? God help us. Who would win that fight? Everyone, everyone's a loser in that fight. Everyone. You reckon? Everyone's a loser. I can't imagine a world. 
those spots, right? Days at days his best when someone comes to bring it, right? And Huey's not going to bring it. So Dave's just going to be at the end of that range, just trying to figure out a way to get in. It's going to be, uh, it's just not going to be a great fight. And, you know, I know people are talking about Huey joining Matchroom, but that doesn't solve any of the problems. Like, Huey's just not exciting enough. And even, his, uh, I think Peter said it as well, where it was like, Huey needs to be more fan friendly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you maybe, maybe needs to uh, have a bit more access to fans and that, because he's very quiet in a U. He's like Josh Whaley, he's a very quiet kid. Robbie Reed, he's another one. They're, they're, these are all quiet lads. Not not many people want to be like Tyson Fury and, and, and he's in, get, as engaging or. That's how you get better boxing, though. Like, you don't, you don't make money by being quiet. You know, promoters, Terry, that I, I think promoters are engaging, you know, like Eddie Hearn, Lou DiBella, because they're selling shows, but Huey Fury, people like that, Terry Flanagan, they're, they're, they're not engaging, Josh Taylor, they're not engaging, are they? That's why the fans don't really connect with them, that's why the fans don't care. They want somebody, they can, the fans kind of connect with Dave Allen a bit better than they do with Huey, don't they? They stand out, don't they? And they stand out because they want to stand out. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think about the Lomachenko... Uh, what's that? Well, the little kid is fighting. Luke Campbell. What do you think of that, Terry? Yeah, there's not much difference, is there? And one of them were a super feb and one were a lightweight, one or vice versa. The Campbell was 16, he wanted lightweight, and then the only one at Feb was super feb, not sure. He's a good fighter though, isn't he? Um, Lomachenko, isn't he? Do you think he's best Terry out there at the moment? No. Who's best? I was having a chat with somebody the other day and I had Errol Spence in my top five and I, cause I rated him and people were like, no, nah, he's not that good, who's he beaten and all that and blah de blah. I just shut the door and get hid from my kids. Uh, but I, I rated, I mean, the top for everybody's top five, no matter what order, you've got Canelo, Spence, uh, Crawford, oh, second Lomachenko, that's everybody's top five. We all agree on that, don't we? I think you should put Wilder in. You put Wilder into top five, Terry? Mm -hmm. Why? The way he's icing people. Yeah, the, but in pound for pound, supposed to be the surgeon technical guys and all that kind of thing. Nah, because when Wilder hits you, you go out. Doesn't matter how big you are, doesn't matter how small you are. When he hits you, you go to sleep. Yeah. And that's important because it's like, you, yeah. you're not trying to win. Yeah, I see what you mean. I remember Richard Towers telling me a story about when he sparred Wilder and uh, I said, oh, what was it like? And he said, God, man, he, says, he, he was just on me in seconds. And it's just power like you've never felt. He said, you're straight away on the back foot. Do you know what I mean? It's... Uh, so he can't explain it. It's freakish power that he's got in it. Some people are just born with that. You're just born with it. He's not even big though, isn't he? I mean, what, what, he would only just have a 200 pound for one fight, wouldn't he? He run a 15 stone. Yeah. 
I mean, that's freaky, shouldn't it? You've got Tyson Fury, 19 stone, and you've got Wilder knocking people out under 15 stone. But that, that's because people don't understand the size of a punch. Because yeah. it's a function of both mass and velocity. So even if you're not the heaviest guy, if you can move your punch faster than the heaviest guy, yeah. you can generate more force on a yeah. smaller surface area. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's craziness, mate. It's craziness, but... Uh, but yeah, we've had a uh, we've had a good chat. We've had a good hour and seventeen minutes. We've covered some good topics. Uh, you can hear my kids ranting and raving. Nearly seven year old, getting yeah. told off. Uh, hey, listen, my little girl, right? I swear to God, she's uh, she's got an Amazon, and obviously she's trying to send it. She says it won't send. <laughs> He's luckily we we've uh, we took uh, we took card off like she, she was trying to put all details in, but she picked all the Christmas list. <laughs> hey, oh my God, nearly collapsed. I nearly collapsed. But what can you do? But other than that, other than that, are you all right, Terry? I'm all right. Pal. You're all right, lad. Hey, coming up on September twentieth, for Josh Whale and Tyrone Nurse, Tommy Frank at Sheffield. Yeah, man, biggest card in the small hall scene that's been announced. That's the one, yeah. September 20th, and we're going to look to do a, 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 a title fight for Josh in December, first week in December. You what? No, we'll go somewhere a bit better than that. We'll yeah, go somewhere yeah, better than that. Because we're just in the middle of nowhere there. Yeah, Dennis has got something lined up for for the next one, but it won't be there, it'll be somewhere else. Uh, I'm not sure if if that lad's still got that place, but no, I think we'll win somewhere else. Uh, but other than that, everything's alright. Uh, but like I said, it's September 20th next show on Free Sports. And uh, the one after that will be December, a title fight for Josh Whalen Barnsley. First week in December. So it's all looking good and it's all about building things up and boxing's a small community and we're, there's rivalries and fallouts and all that but I think deep down everybody wants everybody to do well. Nobody wants anybody to, any harm to come to them. We just want people to do well, don't we? It's, uh, yeah, it's, we want, but, but everybody's got to eat from the same plate. There's like a cake, and everybody's got to have a nice slice. We can't have everybody having the big bits. <laughs> so, all right then, young man. Well, listen, you take care, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Have a good evening, my friend. Yeah, keep on trucking. Keep on trucking, Terry. <laughs> you got it, kid. Bye-bye, pal. Bye. Uh, that was my uh, friend Terry from uh, London, London Town. Uh, yeah, boxing is one of the hardest sports in the world. Uh, one of the hardest sports in the world, but I think we've covered quite a few things tonight. Dave Allen and Eddie Show and the Anthony Joshua, will he fight Ruiz? And Dillian White. Uh, you know, if, Dilly, if has Dillian White been foolish? I don't believe he has. Uh, Terry don't believe that Dillian White's been spiked or anything like that. Well, I don't know me. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a realist, and there's been some strange things happening around Dillian White uh, lately, and I don't think Dillian White's that type of kid. I think he's one of them kids that's front stuff out. I don't think he'd want to. I think he made a mistake with that two year one when he got banned for two year over the counter thing and the board accepted that. They were a mistake and I think I think this one I don't know. I don't see him being daft enough or silly enough to risk millions and millions of pounds when he knows what the consequences are. So I don't know, but uh boxing is a strange sport. Would it surprise me if somebody had spiked him? Well, no, because we've had it before, haven't we? Kid Galahad's brother spiked Kid Galahad. So Kid Galahad said, and so his brother said, could somebody have spiked Dillian? Is it something that's been laid dormant in his body? We don't know. 
but I don't think anybody's going to do any... Uh, nobody is going to do Dillian White any favours. In other words, a lot of people in the boxing industry, Eddie Hearn's pissed a lot of people off. He's pissed Al Eamon off. He's pissed Frank Warren off. Bob Arum. He's pissed a lot of people off. Um, boxing, it, I look at it like this. There's a lot of people in boxing. They're all building armies or they're plotting for 12 months down the line. And it ain't just about two fighters getting in the ring. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that my business partner Nicola's seen some stuff today and she's like, Jim, on my own at motorway, we were deep in conversation and she's saying, God, did things like that really happen? And I'm like, yeah, you've just heard it. That's what happens. It's an horrible sport. But when it's done correctly, when you have fights like Ward Gatti put on by the great Luda Bella, or Frotch Kessler 1 put on by the great Mick Hennessy. Or even Clinton Woods against Glenn Johnson put on by that Dosser Ron Lyle. <laughs> no joking, Dennis. When it's done right, boxing, it can put... Listen, this is how you know when a good boxing fight's on. Go put Ward Gatti on on round nine. Hairs stand up on your arm. Go put Frotch Groves on round six. The first fight in Manchester, I were there ringside. Hair stands up on your arm. Go put Cal Diego Corrales, Castile on, or, or Aaron Pryor against the other guy, Alexis Arguello. Hair stands up on your arms. That's when you're boxing, you get it right. Um, that's why I'll always love boxing. Always, it'll always be in my heart. It's nice to have an opinion though, innit? I'm not going to sit on fans, but I just think that when it's done right, even what was that other fight I want? I went to a fight, Danny McIntosh against Tony Bellew. And for a moment, not, 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 not Danny McIntosh, the guy who dropped Tony Bellew right heavily, Mac Mackenzie. That put air on, my air stood up on, on my arm there. And Tony Bellew, I'm not a Tony Bellew fan, but he showed out that day, didn't he? And, he? and he ended up winning. So, but boxing done right is a great sport, but there's too much bullshit around it for my liking. And there's, a, there's a big question mark in my head whether I'm going to enjoy it moving forward. Uh, with all the politics. I mean, look at this here. Gav McDonald wants to fight. A nine stone fighter that Dennis has got. When it comes down to it, he's gone silent, don't want to fight. Stuff like that pisses me off. It's messed Dennis about and Mick Whale and Josh and everybody else, but we've moved on now and you know Josh has got no no opponent now. Next two months, less than two months, so it's all looking good, but it would have been nice to get Gav McDonald fight on, but there's talkers and there's prone cocktail walkers. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Shout out to Climber Cool. Thanks to Back in Channel. South Yorkshire Packaging. Castle Windows. Castle Conservatory, sorry, at Balby. Edlington Motors. Shout out to all them people that help the channel. Harrison Cameras. Brailsford Printers at Raw Marsh. Thank you very much for the discount. So keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Keep the comments coming. Like and subscribe all right how many of you people are watching these videos of mine and you're actually subscribing come on get me that subscribe button give me a bit of kudos press the like button as well if you like the video if you don't like it well my mum always used to say to me if you don't like someone why say something at all but leave a nice comment is that you robert britain come on trucker tom come on Trucker Tom, you keep leaving comments every single day on my videos and all you put is hashtag PikeyLickHole. What do you mean by that? Come on, I'm gonna give you your I'm gonna give you a, your kudos now. Come on. You've got your, your platform now to leave something on here. Everybody go look at this guy's comments here. He keeps putting hashtag PikeyLickHole. Why would you put something like that? Eh? Alright, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Like I just said, it's a fantastic sport, but why people put comments like that? So why don't you explain yourself, Mr. Trucker Tom? 
or why don't you email me and come on the channel instead of hiding so many people come on here they leave nasty comments nasty emails and you're hiding behind these aliases I mean whatever possessed you to get up that morning and say today I'm going to be Trucker Tom eh? or those who come on here and insult Terry or or Dennis and think people setting Dennis Hobson accounts up here Dennis can't even work a fucking Nokia 702 never mind uh, YouTube <laughs> I ain't got a clue but you know why 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 come on and say negative things like pikey lick hole looking at this here every video you put that don't you but you think you're really clever don't you why don't you come on the channel and let's see let's see your boxing knowledge you have plenty to say for yourself mister trucker Tom eh Jesus if you if you came to Peter Fury's gym because that's what it's aimed at. You wouldn't be saying anything like that if Pete were there or any other lads in the gym, would you? You wouldn't be coming out with... Because them, them comments are racist, aren't they? You wouldn't be coming out with things like that to people's face, would you? You are, Trucker Tom, a keyboard warrior or a troll. That's what you are, a troll. But other people, you know, most of them on here, they leave nice comments or they explain the comments. Some of them have been commenting on here years, Oasis one and there's other other people who will comment. You know, M Star and what was I can't remember all, all of them off the top of my head, but people leave comments on here and the boxing people, Cali boxing and I read them all, all the comments and if I missed anybody I do apologise but keep your comments coming and keep pressing the like button and subscribe and let's grow the channel because we're trying to grow it. And all you people following the channel, you're helping me grow it, aren't you? You're helping grow it in this, grow my channel in this boxing community. Because we're like the alternative news, aren't we? We're not conspiracy theorists. We're just saying it as it is. But I don't want to see, I don't want to wake up in the morning and see emails with pictures of my children sliced up that you've took off social media and things like that. And people actually photograph because a couple of my videos have had my kids in and they've photographed it and I shouldn't do that and I won't put them in from now on and then you send me pictures of them sliced up you people really need investigating it ain't the people who run boxing in need investigating it's you people but it is what it is isn't it but I hope you've enjoyed the boxing chat today it's been really good people should get behind boxers because the toughest sportsmen in the world, they're getting blows to head. Some of them don't even get paid. Some of them get stitched up. The system is messed up. It's hard to explain what happens behind the scenes. Do I think Dillian White has took drugs? No, I don't think he has. I think he might have took bad advice and took something. Or, I don't know, somebody's, at, or somebody's spiked him, but... It's one of three things, isn't it? It's stupidity, innocence, or somebody's downright trying to be rotten with him. It can only go maybe three ways. So, and I don't think somebody's going to risk millions of pounds when he's that close to the mountain top. I don't. So I agree with Spencer Fearing on that, but I don't agree with Spencer Fearing saying Rivers failed the dope test when there's no proof of that. I don't believe that. And there's no proof, so why would you come out with that? You're obviously desperate to stay at Sky, aren't you, Spencer Fearing? You fucking prick. Do you know what I mean? You are a helmet. Imagine you being my co accused, Spencer Fearing. I remember when Spencer Fearing were on remand in a jail in London, Pentonville, I think. You were on remand only a couple of weeks, you were in bits. Terry Dunstan had to look after him when he were in there, he were having a right nightmare. Some people can do it, some people can't, but you don't go around saying people have failed drug tests when they haven't. Alright, but other than that, Spencer Fearing does a lot for the community and that, but he also does a lot and he gets paid for a lot, doesn't he? He doesn't do note for note, does he, like no one? But people need to think on about the dark moments that Dillian White will be having at the moment. Very dark moments they'll be having. And this is what boxing does to you and think about his team what's going to happen to them if he gets the ban all the hard work they've put in 
what Matt, I don't want to go on about this, but Mark Tibbs has put a lot of time into Dilly and White, hasn't he, last four years? Do you know what I mean? Last three or four years, and then you've got uh, four years, innit? And then you've got, there's, there's other people that as well that have put time into, people up at Loughborough. So let's get to the bottom of this. If there's somebody moody in Dillian's team who's taking money from people behind the scenes to spike him, let's have these people flushed out. Because could that have happened? Maybe. Maybe somebody might have spiked him. We're, we're talking about a business here that people would pay to upset Eddie Hearn's apple cart behind the scenes and there's dark forces at work and maybe it is a conspiracy. Terry don't think it is, but I'm not so sure. You know, I, I've got I've got my conspiracy theory on today. I'll be watching moon landings later on and then JFK. But it is what it is, isn't it? So Anyway, I'm now going to do the inserts for these videos and slot photographs of certain people who were in the conversation all the way through. And uh, hopefully jazz it up a little bit for you. So this video will be out probably later on this week. But peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. And like I've just said to you, don't forget to like the video. Show a bit of class. Just have a bit of class for once. Like it and subscribe. Because you know Porky's Corners move going places, don't you? You know it makes sense. Oink, oink. My name is Tony Bellew and I get my smile with Calm Dental. You can't slag me off mercilessly online and then come and kiss my ass off camera. Oh, Eddie, you're a great man, you're great. And then you go and watch his interview, what the fuck? This geezer doing. So that's why I had to tell him. People were tweeting me and saying to me, and they were tweeting guys like Rob Tether, etc., and they were saying, this is how interviews should be done. Okay. Yeah, but. So you, can you just break it down? If we were to have that approach. No, but you're all, you're all on the payroll. So well, you're not going to say anything bad because you lose your job. I'll read the video, the video. That's all, folks. <laughs>